I talk about a lot of superhero media on my channel. However, I hope it's not a secret that comic books are my favorite form of superhero stories. And because of that, I'm always trying to get new people into reading comics. Now, every month, comic book publishers put out solicitations that advertise the comics that are coming out in the next four months. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about some of the books that stood out to me in the Marvel solicitations for April 2022, in the hopes that some of you might be interested in what's coming up. In addition, I'll also be reviewing a book that just came out this month in January of 2022. Stars and Strikes! Hello and welcome to another Carrot Scraps video, and by another, I mean the 91st. Now I've got some great news before we jump into the video. I've been looking for some job opportunities since I moved to my new place, and after building some of my cardboard furniture in the last video, I may have gotten a job. I don't know, I was just submitting some of my cardboard designs to various companies, and somebody responded. So I officially have a job working R&D for Juniper Technologies. And I'm super stoked because the extra cash flow means that I can buy some extra comics this month. And you know that money went immediately to the new She-Hulk number one. So yeah, let's focus on what's happening in this video. Essentially, I'm going to be going over some of the April 2022 solicitations and giving my thoughts on various books that are coming out. And then after that, I'll give some of my quick thoughts on some of the new books that came out in January of 2022. So yeah, when it comes to comic book solicitations, there are always comic books being released. To me, that's an obvious statement, but when I tell people that I read comics, a lot of people respond with, they still make comic books? And the answer to that is yes, of course. There are new comics every week and every month. And so every month there are solicitations released so that way people can pre-order the comics that they're interested in. Now, for those of you who don't know, comic book pre-orders are very important. While reading comic books in a collected edition, like a trade paperback, a hardcover, or an omnibus, is a great way to read a lot of comics, and a great way to save money, majority of the time, a lot of the series that you love won't continue getting published unless somebody buys and pre-orders the individual floppy issues. Like this wonderful pirate-themed Miss Marvel comic over here. And so, if you're able to, and if you're interested in modern superhero comics, I suggest that you buy and pre-order each new comic that you're interested in, because you'll be doing your part in keeping that book published. Now, how can you read, pre-order, or buy your comics? Well, there are a couple ways to do that. First of all, the most convenient way is digitally. You can use websites like comicsology.com to buy and pre-order most new comics. Then there are services like Marvel Unlimited, which I like to call the Netflix of Marvel Comics. Hashtag not sponsored. One of the best resources to read Marvel comics, in my opinion, where you pay a flat rate every month and you can read an unlimited number of Marvel comics. And they have thousands of comics to choose from. Plus, the new Marvel comics that are published every month get put on Marvel Unlimited after six months. I highly recommend it. I think it's a really great service. But when it comes to buying comics physically, you're going to need to find a local comic book shop in your area. And while that might be tough for a lot of people, considering so many of them are out of the way, I think it's really worth the investment to go and find one. Because finding a good comic book shop where you get along with the staff and they know your personal interests is one of the coolest things about being a comic book fan. I've called a number of different comic book shops my home over the years, and I've even worked at some of them. In fact, I loved my last comic book shop so much that I have them ship their comics to me even though I moved away from them. I can't stress this enough, if you're able to and if it's something you're interested in, seek out a local comic book shop. Local comic book shops are the heart and soul of the industry for the past 30 years. And if you're able to and you feel comfortable with it, I think it's definitely worth the time and investment to seek one out that you like. Because a good comic book shop that you get along with and that you enjoy going to is such a big part of comics in my opinion. Anyway, with all of that out of the way, let's talk about the solicitations and get into the books that are coming out in April of 2022. Here we go. Here's an important one. We got Punisher number two, which of course is the new story arc that changes the Punisher's logo and kind of his uh, current status quo, which was pretty controversial for a lot of people. And let's read the synopsis on this one. The Punisher story to end all Punisher stories continues. The hand has lost its way. What was once the world's most fearsome organization of ninjas and killers has found itself defeated time and again by lesser foes. One priestess believes it's because the Hand hasn't had the proper leadership, the living embodiment of their dark god, the Beast. Enter the Punisher, the most accomplished murderer who has ever lived, a man determined to end this war, no matter what it takes. I love the idea that like transitioning from, you know, the hand has to worship the beast. And let's, uh, you know who else loves the beast? The Punisher. 
I mean, I gotta be honest. If you if you follow me on Twitter, you already know. I don't think this is too controversial. Um, I think it's interesting where they're taking the Punisher. I think his new logo looks pretty cool. I think the new status quo is an interesting idea. I especially like the idea of reinventing the hand isolated from the Punisher. Like for years, I've kind of felt the way that this synopsis is talking about, that the hand is supposed to be this deadly organization that's kind of been underestimated for a long time. And I like that this Punisher story seems to have the goal to make them a more deadly and reputable force of, of evil, you know? And where the Punisher fits in with that specifically is interesting to me to find out. I'm here for it. I'm, I'm here for a, a hand rejuvenation. I'm here for the, the rebirth of the hand clan. I want to see them be more powerful in the future. And not for nothing, I'm excited to see Frank Castle do something new. I am probably going to catch a lot of flack for saying what I'm about to say, but here I go. I think a lot of Punisher stories unfortunately fall into a very similar repetition. I absolutely love reading a good Punisher book, but there are a lot of Punisher comics that aren't super unique when it comes to its storytelling. A lot of the times it's just Frank versus gang members or drug dealers, which is an amazing story, but I've seen it a lot of times, and I'm not saying that story can't be told anymore. I'm just saying in the bombastic and over-the-top world of superheroes, every now and again, I'd like to see something a little bit different. And it doesn't need to be as different as when Frank Castle was War Machine, although I did enjoy that for what it was. But I do like to see a little spin on the character to make it feel like I'm reading something completely different. And the Punisher butting heads with the Hand Clan and seeing where that goes, I think is a really great start. So I'm really curious to see where else this comic goes. So also coming out in April, we have Captain America number zero, and this is the description. When Arnim Zola launches a catastrophic attack on New York City, he meets his match in Sam Wilson and Steve Rogers. In the explosive battle that follows, two Captain Americas prove better than one, and Sam and Steve decide they might just keep a good thing going. So obviously this was big news that not only is Sam Wilson returning to his role as Captain America, but that there are going to be two active Captain Americas at the same time. Which I feel like is kind of a trend with Marvel legacy characters right now. I think around the 2014-2015 era, legacy characters became more popular in Marvel comics. Especially characters that would replace the original or maybe the most popular version of the character. And then shortly after that, we would see the legacy character return, and then both would occupy the same space. I think Laura Kinney is a great example of this when she became Wolverine again. Miles Morales is kind of different, but also a similar example. And now we have Captain America doing a very similar thing. And I mean, I, I don't have a problem with it. I think it's fine. I mean, sure, it's a little silly on the face of it, but I, I think it's cool still. I say this all the time, but growing up, one of the things I loved about DC versus Marvel was that DC had legacy characters. And one of my first comic books was a Flash comic where there was just a bunch of Flash characters on the cover. And that was like one of the first times I was introduced to the concept of like a superhero having legacy in in the same time period and I loved the idea of there just being like four flashes at the same time I also got a Thor core comic book from around the same time that kind of encouraged the same thought so I I like the idea of having two Captain Americas and Sam also gets this brand new shield which is pretty cool and I'm, I'm interested to you know, read more about and to find out more about. I like the design of it for sure. My only criticism of this new Captain America book is that I've seen a cover where Sam has facial hair and I don't like the facial hair. I wish he would stay clean shaven. That's my only criticism. <laughs> now, would I recommend this to new readers? Yeah, I, I think so. Obviously it's hard for me to say without too much information, but from what I can tell, they're making an effort to get new people into reading the book. I, you know, making two Captain Americas at the same time is definitely, you know, a publicity tactic. And I think it's a good one. At any rate, it's bound to be an important part of Captain America history. So if you care about, you know, Steve Rogers or Sam Wilson, it's definitely a good time to read, I think. And I'm really excited to check this out. I'm a big Falcon fan and, and I'm excited to see him be Captain America again. So next up, we have Hulk versus Thor, Banner of War, Alpha number one, which I, I suppose rhymes intentionally, I hope. Hulk and Thor have both undergone some massive changes recently, but one thing remains constant, their heated rivalry. When mysterious circumstances bring them into conflict once more, will the God of Thunder be able to triumph against a Bruce Banner who can now control his rage? I love mysterious circumstances, they're often to blame when it comes to these superhero conflicts. 
So I'm assuming that this story is picking up from the Ryan Otley and Danny Cates run of Hulk right now, which I, I feel like has had a lot of weight on its shoulders in terms of what it needs to deliver. Because Immortal Hulk, which is the run that came right before this new run, was such a huge like blockbuster hit. And not just a hit in the comic book world, like, like Immortal Hulk was a hit outside of comics with people who aren't as familiar or as regular readers. And so I think they've been trying a lot of new things, and I think they've been trying things that are similar to Immortal Hulk. And without knowing too much, I suppose we've been getting this more techy uh, Hulk who can control his rage. And I've also been seeing a lot of gore, which is something that Ryan Otley is, is kind of a master at. Ryan Otley is very good at gore and monsters, so I, I think he, he fits for Hulk for sure, if you let him off the leash. And then of course we had Thor who became a uh, Herald of Galactus recently, and then we saw him go to Fortnite like immediately after that. Anyway, either way, I think it's cool that Marvel's giving so much attention to Hulk. I'm a big Hulk fan, so it's just cool to see them do new and weird things with the character. I agree, it is always cool to see the Hulk and Thor like throw hands, and especially with their new changes recently, I'm, I'm curious to see what'll happen. I'm I'm kind of on the fence on this book though when it comes to recommendations i mean i definitely would read this and probably enjoy it but when it comes to these uh alpha issues these first chapters sometimes they're kind of 50 50. like this could all just be set up and it could be good setup but it might not necessarily be a great like single issue read so when it comes to recommending this i'd probably say if you wanted to check this out may maybe check out the donny cates and ryan otley hulk first it's only six issues deep and i feel like if you enjoy that run, uh, it, it'll get you excited for a book like this. Oh boy, and let's talk about the Spider-Man variant cover month that, that that's coming in April. So if you don't know what a variant cover is and, you, and you've only seen Loki and you're confused when I say variant, essentially comic book publishers will sell a comic book with a different cover with basically the exact same you know interior but just a different cover and it's just a collector's item you know people who like to support different artists or people who just like a different cover uh will try to purchase variant covers that they either like or they you know they just want for example the new she hulk number one that came out in january uh, i'm a big she hulk fan and i also like a lot of the artists that are doing variant covers for that issue uh so i'm going to be trying to pick up as many as i can and it's kind of controversial again if you're not familiar with the comic book industry a lot of comic book readers are not into the variant game for various different reasons and i agree with some reasons and, and and maybe not so much with others i don't agree with a lot of the sales tactics but i do like the idea of giving a bunch of artists uh, you know an opportunity to do something fun and something that marvel has done in like the 2010s in now into the 2020s is do themed variant covers and so for an entire month they'll publish a set of variants for all of their books that are coming out with this one theme a great example of this that you might be more familiar with is the apocalypse themed month where artists would illustrate what they thought these Marvel characters would look like if they were one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And the Guardians of the Galaxy cover actually was interpreted in the Guardians of the Galaxy video game. It's a cool little reference there. Another reference I think a lot of people might be familiar with is Gwenpool. Spider-Gwen was a character that came about because of Spider-Verse, but Gwenpool only came about because of a Gwen Stacy variant cover theme month. And now she's like a full-blown character. So it's, it's definitely an interesting but also controversial uh, uh, thing. Anyway, it's 60 years of Spider-Man coming up, which is insane to me because uh, I was getting into like Spider-Man weekly and monthly comics when it was 50 years of Spider-Man. And I remember all the variant covers that came out back then. And so the theme that Marvel is going for with the variant covers is just taking their iconic Marvel heroes and putting them in a Spider-Man costume. It's simple, but I think it's a really cool idea. And so I'm looking at the Thor one right now and I, I like the, I guess the lightning webs. I think that's kind of an interesting idea. Obviously the Mary Jane one, I mean, I'm a huge Mary Jane fan. Obviously the Mary Jane one is, is a must for me i'm definitely gonna pick that one up oh look at the silver surfer one you know i i was looking at this earlier and i was like why does the silver surfer look so weird and it was because i didn't notice that it was spider-man yet I, l I love that he's doing the thwip hands with the kirby crackle bro this shang chi one is everything okay so i i like the ones where it's just kind of you know put them in a, a traditional you know red and blue spider-man costume but one of the things I love about these variant cover months where it's just a bunch of heroes in a new costume is that some artists go like really original and creative with their designs. And this Shang-Chi one is is absolutely everything. I love that it it really looks like a new costume. Like this could be a brand new character, you know? Oh, okay, okay, the Iron Man one is pretty cool. 
I mean, like, this is the thing, like, I, I would love all of these variant covers. I would I would want them all if I could afford them. But this is probably lower on my tier list, but it's still cool. Imagine if we got that in Marvel's Avengers. That'd be awesome. So, yeah, drama aside, I, I really do like these variant cover months that they do. Um, I participate in them when I can. Um, and as, as long as it's a cool idea, I'm down for it. And the way I, I think the best way to hook me on a Marvel variant cover month is if there are new, like, designs. So, like, even though I'm not the biggest Venom fan in the world, when they did the Venomized uh, uh, variant cover month, I was just excited to see, you know, new Venom designs, uh, new costume designs, you know what I mean? That That's what I was really stoked on. Now, on my Twitter, which is at Carrot Scraps, I asked my followers what comics people were excited about in the Marvel solicitations. And here is one of the responses I got. Who Cares says, All of the X-Men titles have been really good so far, so I'm definitely looking forward to Destiny of X. Which is really great insight. I think the X books have taken quite the interesting turn in the past couple of years, and it's been a really rewarding run for Marvel ever since it started. Unfortunately, since it started, I haven't been able to follow it. It was one of the books that I had to cut, and I've been kicking myself ever since because it looks absolutely fantastic. And Jonathan Hickman is in charge of the story, and Hickman is one of my favorite writers in the industry. He wrote my favorite Avengers story, after all. But who knows, maybe this is the time for me to get caught up on X-Men again. Especially with that very nifty Marvel Unlimited subscription I mentioned earlier, I could catch up with the new books for pretty cheap. But yeah, so even though I haven't been reading X-Men for a while, I've kept my eye on the new happenings of the franchise, and it's been looking pretty good in the comics. So I completely understand why Who Cares is so excited about Destiny of X. Anyway, if you want to be featured in another video like this, make sure to check me out on Twitter and to watch out for certain posts that I make. Because if I do another one of these videos for February, I'm definitely going to ask my followers what they think of the solicitations again. And I'd love to feature other people's thoughts on upcoming Marvel books. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, it's my new job. I'm sorry. I have to take this really quickly. Just give me one second. Uh, hello? Hello, Carrot Boy. Thank you for submitting your application to Juniper Technologies. We are excited about this prospect. Oh, I'm, I'm really excited about the prospect as well of, uh, of being a part of the team. Um, I, I actually thought I had the job. Uh, are you still looking at my application or, or do I not have it? Yes, very good. Okay. In the mail, you will receive a box. Whatever you do, do not open this box. Do not shake this box either. It really hates that. If you hear a sound within the box, do not answer any of its questions and assume the box is lying. Um, and, and what, what am I supposed to do with whatever's inside of the box? After a week without food, the box should be safe. Okay, I, I didn't really get to talk about any of that um, on the phone with the recruiter. Um. But I, I'm sure I can figure that out, you know, moving forward. Like, like that shouldn't be too hard to understand. Um, I, I, I just had a couple more. Thank you for joining the Juniper Technologies family. Our roots grow deep within the soil. Also look forward to our monthly solicitations. I definitely will. Thank you. All right. And they hung up. Um, it's a little, a uh, little odd. Um, I'm a little confused. I'm not going to lie. Um, but you know what? I'm just, I'm just happy to have a job again. It's been a while since I've been able to buy modern comics, and if this job helps me buy modern comics again, then I am I am very much so down. At least I, I think I have this job. Um, anyway. So as I mentioned at the start of the video, four months in advance, Marvel, DC, and all the other comic book publishers will put solicitations out so you can pre-order your comics early. And you'd generally either look at an article or you'd go through actual physical solicitation books to find the books that you want to pre-order. But every now and again, you'll get an interesting solicitation from a different place. For example, when the Jane Foster Thor run first started, although back then we didn't know it was Jane Foster yet, we heard that news on The View. And so every now and again, Marvel and DC will just announce something in that way, and in, in kind of a different, more unique way. And we got one of those announcements this January. Although it's not as exciting as The View, I guess, but it was a Twitter announcement. And it was the announcement of an upcoming event coming out this summer. And I have to talk about it really quickly. We know very little about it. We got these little tweets with an image that has a quote from various characters. And then we have three teams above the title of the event, and then the season when this event will be coming out. So before we get to anything, we have to acknowledge that this event is called Judgment Day. And if you're familiar with the channel, you know that I am very obsessed with Terminator right now, and I'm just so excited 
that Marvel is putting something out called Judgment Day. I just, every time I look at it, I'm just, oh, I'm reminded of Terminator and it makes me so happy. We'll see if this has anything to do with Terminator. I highly doubt it. Um, and I highly doubt it has anything to do with, you know, cyborgs or time travel. Uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll see if there are any Terminator, uh, you know, similarities. Anyway, we get three images with text, which are quotes from various different characters. And this is the quote in the first image. Speaking broadly, I'm pro hubris, but how on earth do you think we're going to make a god in a few hours? And that thought provoking quote comes from Tony Stark. Before we unpack that, I want to read the other two, so let's move on. The second quote comes from Aaron Adler. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but it's Destiny of the X-Men comics. And they say, There will always be a war. That's the one thing one can always be sure of. And then the final image has this quote. For millions of years, Earth has been protected from the Deviants. But we made a mistake. We missed some. The mutants. And that quote comes from Druig of Eternals fame. And the three teams that are listed above the title Judgment Day are Avengers, X-Men, and Eternals. So presumably it's an event featuring all three teams. Now, if you're not familiar with comic books, event comics are essentially a limited series where something big and dramatic happens, where many different superheroes can kind of have their worlds collide for a short period of time. Now, longtime comic book readers are actually very critical of comic book events. And while I have my own criticisms, I actually like Marvel comic events. While it's awesome to follow one character on their ongoing story, I think one of the fun things about following superheroes in comics is seeing them cross over. And so having a big event like this is one way to do that. Now, when it comes to the solicitation of Judgment Day, we don't get a whole lot here, but we do get some key details that kind of can hint towards what this will be. First of all, a dramatic name like Judgment Day, you know, it means the end of the world. This is going to be, you know, catastrophic, at least in theory. Again, for those of you who are not familiar with comic book events, event comics tend to have a bad reputation for promising more than they can actually deliver. So sometimes it'll say that it's gonna be really important or really disastrous and it won't actually be. Or more often than not, they'll end up killing a character who will end up returning from the dead like two months later. But still, Judgment Day, it's got a nice ring to it and it's intimidating, which is, I, I don't know, I guess it's what you want from an event comic to some extent. Then we get the three teams, which are really interesting to see these together. Obviously, the Avengers and X-Men are two of Marvel's most successful teams. But then of course we get the Eternals, who are undoubtedly an important part of comic book history and revered by many Marvel comic book fans. And of course we just got the film recently, which means that these characters are more notable for a more general audience. In fact, for the last year or two in Marvel comics, the Eternals have had a more prominent presence in the main Marvel comic book universe. And I'm interested to see how these characters are gonna cross over. I'd say the only thing I'm not interested in when it comes to this event is that one of the Eternals is saying that they're going to attack the mutants. At least that's the implication that the Eternals and the mutants are going to fight each other. And I just, I don't, I don't want that. I love seeing heroes fight each other, but I, I just, I would like an event where we're fighting some other force of nature instead of each other especially the mutants. The mutants always get the, you know, short end of the stick. I, I would like to not have other superheroes try to kill them again. I would rather see the Avengers, the X-Men, and the Eternals fight something else, which is probably what'll happen in the end, but I don't want to see the middle part where the Eternals are trying to kill the mutants. And I really hope that's not what we're getting. Then the second image by Destiny is a little bit more general, so I can't really extrapolate much on it. But the first image is probably like the first or second most important of the three, where Tony Stark talks about making a god. Now he could just be being hyperbolic, right? Like he could be talking about something else entirely. If so, that would be very misleading. And I would hope that Marvel isn't doing that intentionally. But if I'm to take this quote at face value, uh, the Avengers are gonna do something absolutely insane. And I'm completely down for it. Whatever this is, that sounds bizarre and over the top and interesting. And I, that's why I read comics is for bizarre, over the top and interesting. Tony Stark and the other Avengers are creating a God. Let's go. I'm here for it, you know? And those are my general thoughts on the solicitations for Judgment Day. This was published like right as I was finishing this video. So I'm glad that I got to talk about it before I posted it. And we didn't get a whole lot here, but it was really important that I talk about this since this video is about, you know, solicitations in January. And I gotta say, I'm successfully hyped for this event. I can't wait to see the first covers 
characters and the first artwork that comes out of it. Again, I'm hoping that the Eternals are not trying to attack the mutants, and I'm excited to see if there are new antagonists in the story. Um, I think that's what I would like to see more than anything else, is a new villain or a new team of villains, something along those lines. And again, I just have to mention it, while I'm having my Terminator obsession right now, it's so awesome to have a Marvel story called Judgment Day. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to stop using Terminator GIFs uh, uh, when I'm responding to social media posts about this event. You can, you can, you can, I can, I can, I can promise you that. <laughs> so I'm excited about Judgment Day. And are you excited about Judgment Day? Uh, let me know in the comments below. So genuinely, I'm really happy that I got this job at Juniper Technologies. I could pay for all of the important stuff this month, but I really wanted to buy this She-Hulk number one, and I'm happy that I was able to now. And I read it today, so let's talk about my feelings on the book. So I'm working out this scale, and I'm hoping that I'll get it better by the next video, but essentially I'm gonna give a ranking to this book in terms of how much I like it, and in terms of how accessible I think it is to new readers. There might be another scale tacked onto that in the future, but we'll see how these two work for now. So it's how much I like it and how accessible it is to new readers. Let's go. First of all, let me just say how awesome it is to have a new ongoing solo series for She-Hulk. It's been a while since we've had a solo series for She-Hulk, and as a huge fan of the character, I'm really excited. She-Hulk is actually my second favorite superhero, right behind the Scarlet Spider, so it's really awesome to see more attention being put on the character. Anyway, I really enjoyed this new number one. So the issue starts with a Jennifer Walters in her human form who is pretty down on her luck. She's mentally going over how fantastical her life has been because of She-Hulk, but how she still finds herself financially on the outs and feeling a little unfulfilled in terms of her personal achievements. And while I think this might be kind of a cliche angle for a new number one comic book about a superhero, I still think it's an interesting angle to approach for She-Hulk. Then her old pal, giant quotes there, Titania shows up and she's looking for a fight. The fight ends with She-Hulk admitting that she enjoys fighting Titania and would like to have a more friendly relationship with her moving forward. The issue ends with Jennifer getting a new job that acknowledges her strengths as an attorney, but doesn't necessarily flatter her in any other ways. And in the final panels of the issue, we see the return of Jack of Hearts from the dead. Now my thoughts on the book. So far, I absolutely love this book. I love the artwork. It's an art style that I don't just enjoy, but that I actually prefer. During Marvel Now in the 2014 She-Hulk series, I thought the artwork was okay, but I don't just think that the artwork in this new book is okay. I actually really love it. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I do think that starting a new superhero book off with a protagonist who is down on their luck even though they're living a superheroic lifestyle is pretty cliche for a modern day number one issue. But that being said, even though I think it's cliche, it's still an interesting angle to take. But that being said, I think the coolest thing about this issue is the new dynamic that they're embracing between She-Hulk and one of her longest running antagonists, Titania. And something that I love about her is that she's not necessarily maniacal. She is the definition of someone who's made bad choices who have defined her life. Following the story of Titania can be heartwarming at times and heartbreaking at times. She strikes me as somebody who can't control her anger because of her past life choices. And so to see She-Hulk try and call a truce and to build a better relationship with this person, I think that's a really cool and interesting idea. So in terms of quality, I would give this book a 17 out of 20. It's a high quality book that looks beautiful. And in terms of accessibility, I would give this book a 15 out of 20. And as we all know, ranking things out of 20 is very normal. I know I don't have to say that but you know in case you, you yeah everybody knows that but I just wanted to say it anyway it's a normal to rank things out of 20 everybody does it I think this book does a pretty good job of giving the overview of the life and successes of Jennifer Walters I do think it could be a little bit more detailed in who Jennifer is for example while it alludes to the fact that Jennifer has been part of the Fantastic Four and an Avenger in the past it doesn't necessarily go into her personal history how she got her powers and why she fights crime which most ongoing fans of She-Hulk already understand and don't need that repeated to them. But if you're starting this issue new, it might be nice to hear those things. But again, it's not the end of the world. I think they give you the important information. This story starts with Jennifer exploring how she feels about the successes of her superhero persona versus her personal persona. And in terms of that narrative, I think it explains her past in a way that makes sense. And in general, I think the conflict is very simple and very down to earth, which I think is good for a new reader. So those are my thoughts. I'm very happy with how She-Hulk number one came out. Uh, I'm enjoying the books so far, and I can't wait to see more of it in the future. I'm a She-Hulk fan, and I approve of this comic book. 
so not that I'm surprised. It's a lot of cool comics coming out in April, and some cool comics that came out this January. I'm really excited to have a new She-Hulk solo series, and I can't wait to keep reading it. And I hope that some of you at home were maybe influenced to check out some of the comics I talked about because of this video. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. If for some reason you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and to subscribe to my channel for more. As regular viewers know, I make a variety of content on my channel, and I'm always gonna make the videos that I wanna make. But if you see something you enjoy, make sure to let me know, and I'll try to prioritize that kind of content in the future. If you want to watch me play video games live, check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash carrot scraps, and all my other social media, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram are at carrot scraps as well. So I want to thank you again so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Um... <laughs> I, I just came from uh, fighting Suki is okay in uh, in Jump Force, and I, and I lost. Um, and so I thought to honor her victory, um, I would put this comic here. Um, Suki is a huge Carol Danvers fan and a big One Piece fan, and so I thought, how better to honor her victory than by showcasing this Miss Marvel uh, pirate themed comic book? Uh, I, I I think it makes a lot of sense. I don't know.